Hi everybody, this is Anne Emery. Last week I gave a presentation at the American Evaluation Association's annual conference in DC. The presentation was titled, How to Fool Excel into Making Pretty Much Any Chart You Want. It was a 45 minute demonstration. We looked at about a dozen different chart types. A lot of you very much enjoyed the dot plot section. So today we're just going to focus on dot plots. Here's a brief excerpt from that fuller presentation. I first learned about dot plots from my friend John Schwabish at policyviz.com. Here's a screenshot of one of his infographics where he's taken lots of very dense financial data and economics data and made sense of it um, in a way that's much more neat and organized than typical charts. Presenting data like this is extremely effective. This is exactly what we want to happen for our evaluation data as well. We want the policymakers and decision makers to be debating the data and discussing it as part of their decision making process. Here's that dot plot zoomed in. You can see that we've got the changes in spending between 1991, the open circles, and 2011, the closed circles or the closed dots. John's organized it here with blue programs, green programs, and orange programs, and it's very easy to read. Let's take a look at just one section, Medicaid spending on the top in blue, has increased from 82 billion in 1991 to, to 280 billion by 2011. Participation has also increased, and the third column, which I've cut off just so you can see it nice and large, was the average spending per person, which is the logical next step in this equation in your mind. I saw this dot plot, I think earlier in 2013, I was really blown away and I wanted to apply it to evaluation, but I wasn't exactly sure how. So I sat on it for a couple months and now I've thought of plenty of examples and I'm here to share a few of those with you. Let's look at the most basic evaluation data of all time, the after school reading program. So we've got some students here and their pretest and post-test scores on some kind of reading exam. This is how most of us would choose to display that data, a clustered bar chart. And this one's okay, but you know, it's only one option for displaying the data. This one works all right because we've got the data labels directly on the bar, so you're not guessing at the percentage. You've got it right there where you can read it. I've removed the legend altogether and I put those labels for before the reading program and after the reading program directly on the bars. And I deleted all the extra things like the border and the grid lines and the tick marks just so that your eye wouldn't be distracted by any of those details. So let's look at an alternative, the dot plot. Okay, so first off, let's look at just the pretest scores. Here are the pretest scores as a bar chart and you can see that our eyes are naturally drawn to the end of the bars. We're following that jagged line down and our brains are making sense of the lengths of the bars and making comparisons. Dot plots take advantage of this brain function and they place a dot or a circle at the end of the bar so your eyes are naturally drawn out there. And when you peel away the bar and you're just left with the dots, your eyes are still snaking down the page looking at the dots. So this is the basic shape of that dot plot. And it's not finished yet, of course, we have to add the context back in. Here are some contextual details that we need to make sense of it. That's what the completed dot, uh, dot plot would look like for the pretest scores. And you can add back in the post-test scores so you can easily make comparisons. And it's not as dense or cluttered as that clustered bar chart. And it's also a lot easier now to see the distance between the two dots, between the pretest and the post-test scores. You can also use this for comparisons over time. It's an alternative to the line chart. Here we've got coalition assessment scores after year one and year two of a grant. And you can also use dot plots for triangulation. Let's say you're asking somebody like a coalition member to rate themselves and rate their own progress. You'd probably want to get an external perspective like a technical assistance provider who's not receiving grant funding but still is close into the work and knows kind of what's going on on the ground and can make ratings. Dot plots are very, very easy to make in Excel. There are a few different strategies for making them. What I found easiest is a scatter plot. So here I have the scatter plot base um, that uses an X, Y axis, right? So let's look at that 35% down there, student F, 35%. You actually just trace over to the right 35% and go up one. So that student gets a score of 35 comma one. You have uh, 12 different dots in this chart, so your data table on the upper left would actually get 12 different dots as well. They're pretty easy. I encourage you to play around with this and try it out for yourself. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed learning about dot plots today. If you'd like to learn more, check out my blog or follow me on Twitter. Thank you.